does the realism debate matter? Uh, I mean, it's a question of some importance to me, given that I've spent most of my uh, academic life uh, thinking about the question of realism versus anti-realism. I mean, my uh, my undergraduate dissertation was on the miracle argument for realism. My uh, master's dissertation was on uh, the use of idealizations in science as a challenge to scientific realism. Uh, my PhD is on perspectivism, which uh, deals with, with issues connected to realism. I've got videos about all, all of those um, topics in my scientific realism series. Um, but you know, there's a, I think a, there has long been an attitude among um, some philosophers that uh, the, the the realism debate is uh, has has maybe run its course, uh, and and you know may, maybe even worse that it sort of just doesn't really make much difference whether you're a, a realist or an anti-realist. Um, it doesn't it doesn't matter. So I think this is quite. Uh, quite an odd sort of view. I mean, I, I think I think the realism debate does matter, um, and in fact, I would say it's not just that it matters. I think it's kind of unavoidable. It's inescapable. Um, and one uh, maybe good piece of evidence for the inescapability of the realism debate is the fact that uh, many of the people who think that real that the realism debate just doesn't matter are themselves uh, contributors to the literature on realism. So Ian Hacking, for instance, um, he wrote a, a brilliant book called Representing and Intervening. And anybody who's interested in philosophy of science should read that book. It's fantastic. But it's, uh, I mean, it's kind of presented as an introduction to the philosophy of science, uh, and it's structured around uh, the realism debate. Um, and in it, you know, Ian Hacking presents this this new position at the time, uh, the, you know, entity realism, um, that that's been very influential uh, in in the literature. Um, anyway, I remember reading an article by Hacking uh, where he was talking about uh, this book, and I I can't remember the name of the article now, I'm afraid. But anyway, he he says that, you know, look, <clears throat> realism anti realism isn't isn't really an interesting question, right? Um, you know, the reason why I, I, I wrote this book was because I wanted to get philosophers interested in the topic of experimentation, right? That's what he was really interested in. So like traditionally philosophy of science was mainly concerned with theory. You know, it's it's a real focus on scientific theory. Um, and they've, well, hacking felt that they had overlooked um, important features of uh, experimentation. Um, so he says that was why he wrote that book and that he just used the realism, anti-realism debate as, uh, you know, I guess, a, a way to sort of frame the, the, the issues. Um, but then, you know, you sort of think, well, you know, why why choose that question? Right. I mean, there are all sorts of interesting topics in philosophy of science. If realism, anti-realism isn't really an interesting or important question, why on earth did you choose that question is the question uh, around which to organize your book so yeah uh, you know you can you can sort of find this um you know that, that there are philosophers who think that the debate between realists and anti-realists doesn't matter but they find themselves uh, just being being drawn into the debate uh, anyway um and I think, I mean, I, I suggest there are quite good reasons why people find themselves being drawn into this debate one reason is it seems to me that Actually, you, you know, there are a whole host of questions in philosophy of science that require you to take a position on realism versus anti-realism. And you may not, um, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to, uh, uh, like, argue for your position, right? I mean, it's it's kind of inevitable, I think, that in any philosophical work, there are just going to be some uh, views that you you just hold as assumptions, you know, you just you just take them as like presuppositions that you that you don't argue for. It's it's impossible in any philosophical work to examine all of the assumptions that you make. So, you know, it's fine for somebody to assume realism, let's say, in in a, in a philosophical discussion of some other topic. But I mean, you know, you're still making the assumption and it's probably worthwhile to have at least some people uh, thinking about that assumption. Um, so, for, you know, just for example, if we think about you know philosophy of biology. Um, I mean, look at the debate about levels of selection in philosophy of biology, or the debate about the nature of biological individuality, or the species problem. Um, I mean, in all of these cases, whether you are a realist or an anti-realist makes a really big difference to you know what 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 how you how you're going to approach those problems and you know what you're going to say about them. So. 
you know, I, I think that there are a huge number of, of issues within philosophy of science where it matters whether or not you're a realist or an anti-realist. And it's not just in uh, philosophy of science, you know, I, I think that um, your position on realism versus anti-realism is going to have consequences for your views in other areas of philosophy, you know, for the way you maybe approach metaphysics, for instance. Um, obviously, metaphysics inevitably has to uh, draw on the results of science if we're, you know, if we're talking about the metaphysics of time, right? Well, it makes, you know, we have to think about what the sciences are saying. And then your position on the metaphysics of time um, is going to depend on, again, whether you're a realist or an anti-realist about science. So, you know, one reason why the debate between realist and anti-realist matters is just because it's it's something that's kind of presupposed in so many other uh, philosophical debates. I'd also suggest, though, that you know, beyond this, it's it's a debate that I think is just very interesting uh, in itself. And in a way, I would say it doesn't really need any further justification. Uh, one of the big questions of philosophy, one of the central questions of uh, philosophy, uh, is the question of yeah, what is the scope uh, of our knowledge, right? I mean, ha how much do we know about the world? And I, I mean, I think that that's a question that sort of, yeah, that's thinking about that question is probably what motivates many people to start doing philosophy in the first place. You know, it's that's that's one of the, the big things that we really want to figure out. Um, now, I mean, that's been one of the big questions of philosophy, obviously, since since the dawn of philosophy. Um, but in the modern world, it looks like our uh, best, most reliable access uh, to, you know, to the world uh, is through, you know, it's, it's science, right? Like if we have any, any knowledge at all of how the world is, um, that's going to be knowledge that was provided by the sciences. So, I mean, it's, it's inevitable. If you are interested in the question of what is the scope of our knowledge, then, you know, you're, you're going to be, you're going to end up thinking about the scientific realism debate. Um, so I mean I, I so that's why I I think uh, I think it it matters. Um, why do philosophers think that it doesn't matter? I guess is m maybe the more the more interesting question. I mean why why is it that there's this attitude that it's run its course that it or that it it's sort of irrelevant and um, I mean I think actually you know it's people don't necessarily come out and, and say this but I think really that the feeling is that it's just a bit kind of uncool um, and so I think one reason. Uh, has to do with the fact that philosophy values originality. Uh, realism, anti-realism is a very old question. Um, and, you know, it's, it's something that has, has been like one of the central questions in philosophy of science. Um, well, since since we've had philosophy of science, you know, so um, philosophers want to uh, sort of stake out their their own position. They want to, to kind of divide up the conceptual terrain in new ways and so if we can show that actually this old question doesn't really matter and um, you know it's maybe not worth thinking about and it's not an important issue and here are the important issues that people haven't thought about so much yet uh, that's like a more original position and maybe also there's a sense that since realism anti-realism is such an old question you know we've pretty much like covered the arguments you know the, the debate has been had and it's been done and that, that there isn't really anything more to say about it um, I mean, I pretty. I think that's that's wrong. Uh, I, you know, there's a, a, still a lot being published. There are a lot of new arguments coming out. I would say that one area that, in particular, that is still not properly explored is uh, arguments that appeal to the use of idealizations in science. Um, I, I think that, in in particular, you know, there's a lot of uh, potential for interesting work there. But I think another reason why uh, realism anti-realism tends uh, to be looked down upon to some extent is that uh, so re realism anti-realism is uh, what you might call a kind of general theory right it's 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 a it's kind of one of these big grand theories uh, about you know scientific knowledge as a whole and i think that in a, in m much modern philosophy of science uh, you know we've started now to it, it's much more concerned with like specific problems, right? Like, yeah, so within philosophy of biology, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the levels of selection problem or, um, you know, biological individuality problem uh, or, you know, the species problem, right? So it's, it's, 
that there's a concern with these very specific problems uh, rather than with general questions like you know well how do we distinguish science from pseudoscience what is the scientific method um you know how does scientific confirmation work there seems to be more there's been a shift away from um these kind of grand general theories and towards dealing with more specific issues and of course realism anti-realism as i say it's it's very much a grand general theory about science as a whole now, as I mentioned, I think you can't really answer many of those more specific questions without taking a position uh, on the realism debate. But but still, I think maybe that's uh, you know, why, why some philosophers tend to, to uh, you know, look down on it. OK, yeah, so uh, realism, anti-realism. Uh, some people seem to think it's kind of a waste of time, but uh, I disagree. I think it's uh, really fascinating and really important.